presenting Retribution, another in the series of dramatizations based on stories featured in the American Weekly, the magazine which is distributed with all first to Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Today's radio drama was inspired by an interesting story which will appear in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly magazine. It was staged and produced in the New York studios of the General Broadcasting Company. And now, the American Theater of Radio presents Retribution. This is the story of a true bohemian. Come with us to the Café Boheme and let our characters unfold the story. Hello there, Deegan. Well, for the love of... Hanley, where have you been? All around? How's tricks? There. Say, we all thought you'd passed on and were writing heavenly dramatic reviews now. And you hope they'd be better than the ones I've done for your lousy paper, huh? Yeah, only the lousy describes your reviews better than my paper. Then why don't you get a better man to do them for you? I wouldn't a minute if I could get him. Who's my rival? Armand Darcy. Back number Darcy? That's who, Uncle Armand. Nobody knows the history of the theater and the personality of the stage like he does. And tonight... I'm going to see if I can't persuade Armand Darcy to write exclusively for me. Well, that means I don't write any more freelance stuff for you, huh? Not if I can get Darcy. You want to make a little wager on that, Deegan? Oh, I think I can persuade him all right, Hanley. Ah, but you're not sure enough about it to bet, are you? Of course. What stake? That if he doesn't accept, you'll offer me the job. <laughs> oh, and if he does? If he does, I'll gladly turn second-string critic and write for nothing. Well, I've got to have somebody write for me. <laughs> I don't see how I can lose either way. I'll take you up on that. Good. And uh, here comes your man, Darcy, now. Oh, Armand. Hello. Won't you join us? Well, well, my old friend, Editor Deegan and Critic Hanley. I shall be charmed. Thank you, thank you. I came here especially to see you, Armand. Indeed. I'm flattered, my dear Deegan. Well, when you hear what he has to say, and then you'll be even more flattered. I want you to do the drama reviews for my paper. Why, of course. I should be delighted to submit my humble criticisms for your readers. Splendid. I knew you would. There. What did I tell you, Hanley? I shall make the formal announcement in tomorrow's edition. Armand Darcy becomes staff dramatic critic for this paper. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Hold on a moment, Deegan. Huh? What's the matter? Uh, did you say staff critic? Of course. Uh, you mean I am to come under weekly salary and report to you every day? All day and do my work in one of your offices? Certainly. Oh, no, thank you. You you refuse? Oh, I'm sorry, but I must. What did I tell you, Deegan? <laughs> Here I'm offering you financial security, Armand. A steady and dependable income. And you refuse. Why? Oh, because I must be free to write my novel. Your novel? Yes. I have made up my mind to write the great novel of our time. And I can do it. Well, I think you can, Armand. But why can't you work for me and write your masterpiece in your spare moment? No, no, no. My novel must come first. Armand, uh, now, now, please don't misunderstand me when I say this, but you're nearly 60. Well? Don't you think you'd better prepare for the future? Oh, I have managed to live so far. But time waits for no man, Armand. I know that. That's why I must be able to devote all my time to my novel. <laughs> but you've been saying that for the past 25 years. Ah, but this time I mean to write it. I have it all completed in my mind and heart. All I have to do now is to write it. What's it about, Uncle Armand? Well, if you don't know, Hanley, you're the only one who hasn't heard it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not as old as you fellas, you know. Haven't I told you about it, Hanley? Well, I thought I had. Why, it's just... Excuse me, Armand, before you get started on the plot... Do you refuse my offer once and for all? I must, my friend. But don't think me unappreciative of your flattering offer. Very well. I must be running along, if you don't mind. When do I report for work, boss? <laughs> You'll win. See me in the morning, Hanley. Well, good night, Armand. Good night, and thanks again. Good night, Deegan. Now, Uncle Armand, what's this plot of yours? Well, it's the story of a girl named Marianne who is fired with ambition and who ascends with many adventures to world fame. I tell you, Hanley, as I shall write it, the novel will be something stupendous. Oh, I'm sure of it. Tell me, was your character drawn from any one actress, or is she a composite of all your amours? There was a Marianne. Oh, but, but of course that isn't her name. Oh, naturally. She was a beautiful creature. So tiny, so delicately formed, like a breath of Paris spring. Hanley... She was the only real love of my life. Sometimes I wish I hadn't run away from her. Oh, well, I shall perpetuate her memory in my novel. I shall draw her so that others may know Eloise and love her as I... Oh, there, there, there. 
It's out. I didn't mean to mention it, but now, now you know. Eloise? Yes. You don't mean Eloise Chauvenier? Yes, Eloise Chauvenier. Why, she was a famous beauty of 20 years ago. Everybody still uses her for a comparison. Why, they say so-and-so is beautiful, but not as beautiful as Eloise Chauvenier. And they are right, my boy. They are right. I wonder what ever became of her. They say she left the stage and disappeared right at the height of her triumph. I know. That was when I knew her. Ah, dear Eloise. Oh, please, look at the hour. I, I didn't realize the time. I'm supposed to drop into Majestic and see a new show called uh, uh, Puss in Boots or something. They, they sent me a couple of seats. Say, come along, why don't you? Why, I should be indebted to you, my dear Hanley. Oh, not at all. I'm greatly indebted to you. To me? For what? For my new job. Come along. We'll just have time to make the show. Let's, uh, let's look at the program. Oh, oh there's to be a kitten dance at the opening. <laughs> what won't they think of next, eh? <laughs> There are the kittens. <laughs> Cute, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they... Uh, Hanley. Hanley, look. I am. Don't worry. Do you know who that girl on the right is? No, and neither do you. She was born after your day, Uncle Armand. That is my Marianne. What are you saying? That is my Marianne in the flesh. Impossible. Reincarnated exactly as she was 20 years ago. Well... <laughs> Well, what do you say to going backstage and meeting this heroine who is reincarnated as a kitten? No, no. Oh, come along. Come along. I think it'd be most interesting. No, Hanley, I tell you, no. I must never meet her. Which one is he? There he is. Over at the little table near the palm. You see him? That gray-haired man with the monocle? Yes, that's Uncle Armand. Uncle Armand? Well, that's what everybody calls him. Come along. Good evening, Uncle Armand. Oh, good evening, Hanley. Uh, won't you... Oh, oh, I, uh, I, uh... This is Miss Marie Finster, uh, the young lady we discovered last night. How do you do? Yes, yes, I remember. <laughs> well... Aren't you going to ask us to sit down? Oh, oh forgive me. Uh, uh, yes, do, do sit down. Thank you. I must dash along, Uncle Armand. I'll leave you to get acquainted with your reincarnated heroine. Uh, I don't understand, Mr. Hanley. <laughs> ask him. See you later. What does he mean, Uncle Armand? Uh, Uncle Armand... Oh, 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 what is it, my dear? I, I was thinking of something else. Yes? You're, you're so like... Like, uh, uh, tell me, who who are you? Oh, just a dancer from Puss and Boots. My mother was on the stage, and I've always wanted to be. Uh, this is my first engagement. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I have known most every actress on the stage during my lifetime. Perhaps I knew your mother. What was her name? Her stage name was Eloise Chauvenier. Eloise? Did you know her? Know her? <laughs> yes, my child, I, I knew her well. Where... Where is she? Her mother is dead. Dead? Yes. She died when I was quite small. Eloise. Dead. How old are you, my child? Nineteen. And your... Your father. Where is he? I don't know. I never knew him. He deserted my mother before I was born. Oh, my God. You see, when mother died, Mrs. Simpson brought me up. I've been to high school and learned stenography and typing, but I just couldn't get a job. And then I entered a contest and had my picture in the papers, and then I was offered this job on the stage. Naturally. And now Mrs. Spencer has found a job for me in an office. She wants me to give up the stage and take it. Well, but you don't want to, of course. Oh, no, I don't. So when Mr. Hanley said you'd noticed me last night, you who know everything about the stage, I, I had to ask you what you think of my chances of success. <laughs> you, you flatter me, my child. Oh, no, I know you'll surely be right. If you think I have a future on the stage, then, then I'll stick to it even if I starve. Oh, Uncle Armand, tell me what you think. Stay on the stage, my dear. All you need is publicity. And your, your Uncle Armand will attend to that. Oh. 
Well, Uncle Armand, what can I do for you? Oh, nothing for me, Deegan, but you can for someone else. Who? Marie Finster. Never heard of her. She is a dancer in Puss in Boots. She is beautiful and talented. If you could give her some publicity, my dear Deegan, she will be a sensation. And her success on the stage will be assured. No, but after all, she's nobody but a dancer. What has she done to deserve publicity? Print her picture in your paper. It's the most influential paper in the city. Believe me, the girl has talent. All she needs is to be brought to the producer's attention. Oh, my dear Uncle Armand, after all, there are thousands of pretty and talented girls. You, you, you won't do it? You won't print her picture? Well, I'm sorry. There's absolutely nothing to hang a story on. But only last week you printed Lorraine Latour's picture. Ah, yeah, but she has half the men in town buzzing at her feet. Oh, uh, I see. Deegan, would, uh, would you consider me celebrated? You know you are. And do you know that this Marie Finster is the reincarnation of my Marianne? Well, that won't make a story. She has been seen in my company a great deal, Deegan. Yes, I, I knew that was a uh, What are people saying about me? All the usual thing? Uh, that she is my latest love? Yes. If anything should happen to me, her name would be linked with mine, wouldn't it? Of course. Mom and Darcy's sweetheart would be front page stuff. I thought so. <coughs> may I may I have a glass of water? Certainly. There you are. <coughs> Thank you. I I must take my medicine. No, I didn't know you'd been ill. Oh, nothing serious. Will you will you do me a personal favor, Deegan? If I can. I haven't my glasses with me. Will you write a note as I dictate it? Gladly. Ah. Address it to Marie Pink. Yes? My dearest child, in order to keep my promise to you, to get you the publicity and a start to the success you truly deserve, I give you my life. It's all I have to give. What are you saying, man? Ah, wicked old Armand Darcy is well known, and the girl for whose sake he killed himself will make front page headlines. Stop, you can't mean this. Right, Deegan, right. Time is passing. And I hope, my child, that I shall have helped you a little in the great career that is in store for you. That's all. I'll sign it. Harmon, you mustn't do this thing. It's already done. What do you mean? The, the medicine you saw me take a few moments ago. It was poison. Yes. I'll get a doctor. No, no. No, no operator. Get me a doctor, quickly. Yes, hurry. It's, it's, it's too late. Friend, the poison I took works swiftly and without pain. My God, what can I do for you, Armin? Just one thing. Give my Marianne the publicity. But why? Why did you have to do this? It was the only thing to do. I, I ruined her mother's career 20 years ago. My death will give her daughter her career. It is retribution for the, the novel, the great novel, which I should have written and had never finished. I'm on. <sighs> Read this fascinating story in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly Magazine under the title, He Gave His Life. It was all he had to give. The American Weekly is a magazine which is distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast.